Hello, I'm Sheldon Axler, the author of Linear Algebra Done Right. This video discusses part two of the section of the book titled Orthogonal Complements and Minimization Problems. In this video, we will focus on minimization problems. The following important minimization problem arises frequently. Given a subspace U of V and a point V in the vector space V, Find a point u in our subspace u such that the norm of v minus u is as small as possible. In other words, find the point in the vector space u that's as close as possible to v. We will give a concrete example of this kind of minimization problem in a minute, but first let's get to the result. Suppose u is a finite dimensional subspace of v and v is a point in v. A result states that the norm of v minus the orthogonal projection of u applied to v is less than or equal to the norm of v minus u for every vector u in u. Recall that p sub u of v is an element of u. Thus this inequality says that the smallest v minus the norm of u can be for any vector in u is obtained when we choose u to be the orthogonal projection of u applied to v. The picture shown here may help explain this result. In this picture, we're representing u as a line through the origin. We have a point v, and we're trying to find the point in the subspace u that's closest to v. As you can see from the picture, that point is the orthogonal projection of v onto the subspace u. In other words, the closest point is p sub u applied to v. Let's look at the proof of this result. Suppose u is a point in u. We'll look at the norm of v minus the orthogonal projection of u applied to v. As usual, it's easy to work the norm squared, so that's what we'll do. And we have the inequality shown here. This inequality holds because the first term on the right is the same as the term on the left, and we're adding something non-negative. Now we have the equality shown in red, which follows from the Pythagorean theorem. The reason for this is the first term, v minus p sub u of v, that is a vector that is in the orthogonal complement of u, as we've seen previously, and the other term, the orthogonal complement of u applied to v minus u, is in u. So those two vectors are orthogonal, and we have this equality by the Pythagorean theorem. Finally, simple cancellation gives the equality now shown in red, and then taking square roots of both sides gives the desired inequality, completing the proof. Let's look at a concrete minimization problem so we can see how spectacularly useful a previous result can be. Here's the minimization problem we want to consider. Find a polynomial u with real coefficients and degree at most 5 that approximates the sine function as well as possible on the interval from minus pi to pi in the sense that we want to minimize the square of the error, as shown here. To put this in the language of our previous result, we'll let v be the vector space consisting of the continuous real-valued functions on the closed interval from minus pi to pi, with inner product given as follows. The inner product of two functions, f and g, is the integral from minus pi to pi of the product of f and g. Notice that if f equals g, then the inner product of f with f is the integral of f squared, which is exactly what we want in terms of the minimization problem stated above. Also, we'll let our vector v be given by the function v of x equals sine x, and our subspace u is p5 of r. In other words, polynomials with real coefficients and degree at most 5. With this setup, our previous theorem tells us that u, the best approximation to sine x, is equal to the orthogonal projection operator applied to v. And we even have a way of computing that. That'll be the sum shown at the bottom of the first column. Notice the sum goes from j equals 1 to 6, where e1 up to e6 is an orthonormal basis of u. The reason for 6 is that the vector space p5 of r has dimension 6. Now what we need to do is find an orthonormal basis for p5 of r. 
We have a basis, 1x, x squared, x cubed, x to the fourth, x to the fifth, but that is not orthonormal with respect to the inner product that we're using. So no problem, we just apply the Gram-Schmidt procedure to that basis, giving us an orthonormal basis. You might want to use a computer or something like Wolfram Alpha to actually do the integrals that are involved in the Gram-Schmidt procedure in this case. Once we have our orthonormal basis, e1 up through e6, we can apply the formula shown at the bottom of the left column. Again, that just involves doing some integrals, and we get that u equals the function shown here. Note that u involves only the odd powers of x. That's not too surprising, because the function sine x is an odd function. Finally, if we use a computer to approximate the value shown here, we get that u is approximately the function shown in the last line in red now, where six digits have been shown for each of the coefficients. Let's see where we are now with this problem. We wanted to find a function u that's a polynomial with real coefficients and degree at most 5 that approximates the sine function as well as possible on the interval from minus pi pi in the sense that the integral of the square of the error is as small as possible. We use linear algebra to come up with the following solution. You might be surprised that we didn't get the solution given by the Taylor series. Recall from calculus that the Taylor series, degree 5 for the sine function, is x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial. Let's write that in decimal form so we can compare it. Again, we'll use um, six digits for each coefficient, and you can see what we get. Comparing the Taylor polynomial in the last line to our solution, we see that in our solution, the first coefficient starts off with 0 0.9878, whereas the Taylor polynomial, the coefficient is close. It's 1, but not exactly the same. The coefficients of x cubed are also close, but not exactly the same. And then the coefficients of x to the fifth differ by a much higher percentage. Let's compare these solutions by looking at their graphs and the graph of the sine function. First, we have the graph of the sine function in blue and its approximation u in red, shown in the same graph. Actually, you can only see the blue, which has been laid on top of the red, because they are identical as far as our eye can see. If you happen to have an electronic version of the book, you might try blowing up this picture to about 800%. At the very tail end, you can see a little bit of divergence between the blue and the red. But otherwise, they're, they look identical. How about the Taylor polynomial? Here's the graph of sine x and the Taylor polynomial, again on the interval from minus pi to pi. As you can see, the approximation looks quite good, near zero. We can't even tell the two graphs apart, and we only see the blue. But as we get close to, oh, around 2 and negative 2, we can see a huge difference. In other words, the approximation we have found, which is not the Taylor polynomial, does a better job, on the average, than the Taylor polynomial. This is really interesting that we have used linear algebra to improve upon something that we learned in calculus. This concludes part two of the video on orthogonal complements and minimization problems.